a great, great woman, Trump praises the Queen as they celebrate the eternal friendship between their nations as he and Melania join Her Majesty and the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge at state banquet. The special relationship between Britain and the United States was reaffirmed last night with moving toasts in the ballroom of Buckingham Palace as the President hailed Queen Elizabeth as a great, great woman. Amid the splendor and ceremony of a state banquet for 170 dignitaries and guests, Donald Trump thanked the Queen for her gracious hospitality and nearly seven decades of friendship with the United States. He spoke of the Blitz and the bombing of Buckingham Palace, saying that in their dark hour the people of this nation showed the world what it means to be British. He called the Queen a great, great woman recalling her service on the home front during the war and said the bond between our nations was forever sealed in that great crusade. He said the Queen embodied the spirit of dignity, duty, and patriotism that beats proudly in every British heart. Raising his glass the 45th President of the United States said, On behalf of all Americans, I offer a toast to the eternal friendship of our people, the vitality of our nations and to the long-cherished and truly remarkable reign of Her Majesty, the Queen. Shortly before retaking his seat Mr. Trump appeared briefly to breach royal protocol by placing his hand on the Queen's back in a gesture of personal thanks. By tradition the Queen should not be touched, but the President's host seemed unperturbed following his warm personal toast. Moments earlier, rising from her seat at the head of the vast horseshoe-shaped table, Her Majesty spoke of the D-Day landings, which took place 75 years ago on Thursday and which the President will commemorate with visits to Portsmouth and Normandy. Her Majesty said, On that day and on many occasions since, the armed forces of both our countries fought side by side to defend our cherished values of freedom and democracy. She added, We owe an immeasurable debt to the British, American and Allied soldiers who began the liberation of Europe on 6 June in 1944. She went on. As we face the new challenges of the 21st century the anniversary of D-Day remind us of all our countries have achieved together. Mr. Trump looked thoughtful and attentive as Her Majesty said that international institutions, created in part by UK-US cooperation, were designed to protect a hard-won peace. The Queen also mentioned the US and UK strong cultural links and shared heritage and said the two nations were bound by the strength and breadth of our economic ties. She concluded, Mr. President, as we look to the future, I am confident that our common values and shared interests will continue to unite us. Tonight we celebrate an alliance that has helped to ensure the safety and prosperity of both our peoples for decades, and which I believe will endure for many years to come. The Queen finished by inviting the room to raise a toast to the continued friendship between our two nations, and to the health, prosperity and happiness of the people of the United States. The dinner came after an ebullient Donald Trump took to Twitter yesterday afternoon to share his delight at the royal welcome he received yesterday at the beginning of a three-day state visit. An hour before last night's luxurious state banquet at Buckingham Palace, after being greeted in the morning by the Queen and spending the day in royal company the President tweeted that the London part of trip is going really well. Mr. Trump added, the Queen and the entire royal family have been fantastic. The relationship with the United Kingdom is very strong, and he weighed back into the Brexit debate by saying a big trade deal would be possible once the UK gets rid of the shackles. The President and Melania enjoyed afternoon tea with Prince Charles and Camilla in the afternoon, after the Queen gave him a personal tour of historic artifacts in the royal collection and a bevy of royals turned out to give him an extraordinary welcome. Mr. Trump started his three-day tour to strengthen the special relationship, and commemorate the 75th anniversary of D-Day on Thursday, with a state banquet in his honor at Buckingham Palace last night. Shortly before 8 p.m., the President's helicopter landed outside Buckingham Palace for the lavish state dinner for which palace assistants have spent three days transforming the royal ballroom into a banqueting hall. Royal guests including the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge were seen making their way to the palace, with Kate resplendent in a pearl and diamond tiara. Last night the Trump dynasty including his four adult children, 
mingled with the royal family at the lavish state banquet in the Buckingham Palace ballroom with its six glittering chandeliers, where the vast white clothed horse shoe shaped table had been laden with George IV's silver gilt grand service dinner set. Small white place cards embossed with a golden royal crest and edged in gold were at each setting, to show where the 170 guests were to be seated. The Queen, who does not have her own place card, sat at the head of the table, with the Prince of Wales on her left and Mr. Trump on her right. Joining Mr. Trump and First Lady Melania at the White Tie and Tiara event were four of Mr. Trump's five children, Ivanka Trump, with her husband Jared Kushner, Donald Trump Jr., Eric Trump and his wife Laura, and Tiffany Trump. Sixteen members of the royal family attended the dinner, the Queen, the Prince of Wales, the Duchess of Cornwall, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, the Duke of York, the Earl and Countess of Wessex, the Princess Royal, Vice Admiral Sir Tim Lawrence, the Duke and Duchess of Gloucester, the Duke of Kent, Prince and Princess Michael of Kent and Princess Alexandra. The Duke of Sussex, who was at the private lunch earlier, was not in attendance, nor was his wife who has temporarily stepped back from royal duties while on maternity leave looking after their four-week-old son Archie. And Prince Harry entered the royal picture gallery yesterday afternoon with Ivanka Trump but chose to stand at the opposite end of the room to the U.S. President and his wife Melania. The Duchess of Sussex has previously been strongly critical of Trump on social media promising to leave the U.S. if he were elected. Upon being told of her tweets in a recorded interview in advance of the trip, the president responded that he didn't know she was nasty, before later claiming he had not said it. Prince Charles, who had tea with Mr. Trump yesterday afternoon, was seated next to Mrs. Trump, while Camilla was on the other side of the president and next to U.S. Ambassador Woody Johnson. William sat between the Prime Minister Theresa May and Mr. Johnson's wife Suzanne Nearcha, and Kate between U.S. Secretary of the Treasury Stephen Nutchen and the Lord Mayor of London Peter Islin. The President's daughter and adviser Ivanka sat between the Countess of Wessex and International Trade Secretary Liam Fox, while Ivanka's husband Mr. Kushner, a senior adviser to Mr. Trump, had the Princess Royal on his right and Mark Carney, Governor of the Bank of England, on his left. Former U.S. President Barack Obama's state banquet in 2011 was sprinkled with Hollywood stardust, with a guest list including actor Tom Hanks, actress Helen Bonham Carter and director Tim Burton. But Mr. Trump's grand occasion was more trade and industry than show business. Among business leaders in attendance were the Swedish chairman of AstraZeneca Leif Johansson, BP chairman BP Helga Lund, Balfour BD chief executive Leo Quinn. GlaxoSmithKline boss Emma Walmsley, Universal Music Group chairman Sir Lucian Grange and Royal Dutch Shell chief executive Ben van Buurden, as well as Metropolitan Police Commissioner Cressida Dick. Politicians at the event included Mrs May and her husband Philip, Cabinet Office Minister and Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster David Lidington, Chancellor Philip Hammond, Foreign Secretary Jeremy Hunt, Defence Secretary Penny Mordaunt, Mr Fox. Environment Secretary Michael Gove, leader of the House of Lords Baroness Evans and Europe and America's Minister Sir Alan Duncan. Twenty-three elaborate floral displays of dark pink peonies, lilac stocks and pale pink roses adorned the tables, along with large seven-branch state candelabrum and the elaborate soup tureen which was once used to serve George IV his favorite turtle soup. Donald Trump dined on a menu of Windsor lamb and strawberry sable. The first family were treated to steamed fillet of halibut with watercress mousse, asparagus spears and chervil sauce, followed by saddle of new season Windsor lamb, with herb stuffing, spring vegetables and port sauce. The menu was chosen from four possible alternatives presented to the Queen by royal chefs. Preparations in the kitchens of Buckingham Palace began as close to the event as possible, with every dish and made from the scratch. Mr. Trump is known to have a sweet tooth so likely enjoyed the pudding, strawberry sable with lemon verbena cream, made of crisp biscuits, smooth pastry cream and fresh strawberries, 